Greetings. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to address the conference remotely in this way with my presentation uh, by video. Uh, I hope we can have uh, a nice discussion on the panel uh, together with Syed and, uh, and everyone. So the title of my talk is for an ecological anarcho-communism. This is this title I take from um, the name of the concluding chapter to my recent book, Imperiled Life, Revolution Against Climate Catastrophe, from AK Press. And the idea here is really to try to synthesize many of the uh, historical contributions many ecologists, anarchists, and communists have uh, contributed theoretically as regards the problem of environmental decline. We can think of Elise Reclou, Murray Bookchin, Pyotr Kropotkin, uh, and many others within this tradition. Uh, and so in that sense, my comments are not terribly innovative, but we can perhaps think of them as, as uh, synthetic. So I think we all are familiar with the depth of the ecological crisis today, uh, given especially this fall, the Hurricane Sandy event, uh, the drought in the Midwest uh, this summer, together with the Arctic sea ice extent this last summer, which of course was the worst ever recorded since the satellites began in the late 70s. Uh, even worse, of course, than the 2007 event, uh, in which that caused several climatologists observing these questions to be rather um, terrified as to be the accelerating uh, rate of climate change in this way. Um, my analysis, uh, in consonance with many other social anarchists, and especially ecological anarchists, is that this problem that we are facing today, uh, that of uh, environmental destruction, uh, eco-catastrophe or eco-apocalypse even, has to do really with the forms of hegemony uh, existing in the world today. That is capitalism, uh, the state, and patriarchal regimes. Uh, I do not read this problem, this crisis, as uh, some critics of civilization do, as a problem thus of civilization, one that uh, has its origins in the beginning of agriculture. No, I believe, uh, and I agree very much with Eddie Ewan in this sense, when he criticizes uh, this strain of thought for overemphasizing the problems of uh, capitalism and capitalist modes of production and consumerism, which of course is really the problem here and why we have seen this problem emerging since the so-called Industrial Revolution. Um, so of course this problem also has to do with the historical failure of anarchism. That is, the revolution, social revolution has not been successful to date here in 2012, moving into 2013. Uh, but nonetheless, we know that humanity is other, to paraphrase Ernst Bloch, the German Marxist cultural theorist. Uh, humanity does not necessarily agree, and it certainly is not with capital and the state. It is a different entity than that. Uh, I think that the depth of the ecological crisis in social terms, environmental terms, thinking of the future generations of our, of our species, uh, together with, of course, non-human nature, the youth, the presently oppressed of this world, uh, all of whom uh, see their life conditions degrade so spectacularly under this existing regime of capital. Uh, I think that we sh really are facing the imperative of social revolution, one that is in accordance and following from uh, Immanuel Kant's famous categorical imperative regarding humanity as an ends, also, of course, Adorno, Theodore Adorno's negative reinterpretation of this, speaking after Auschwitz, after the Holocaust of the Shoah, one that Herbert Marcuse, his comrade, very much repeated even in his last public address. That is, that industrial genocide should never be allowed to recur. Um, this project, I take it as not being one of Leninism or Maoism or authoritarian communism in that sense, but rather anarchist. Uh, we have many historical examples of, of what is social revolution. Revolution, if we go to its, uh, to its etymology, meaning a turning around, um, as Pauline in the new novel 2312 by Kim Stanley Robinson discusses. I very much recommend this text. Um, we can think of accelerated historical change, as, G as George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel speaks uh, at the beginning of the Phenomenology of Spirit, the flash, the sunburst that illuminates the whole. 
and, pro and provides the flash of the new world. Um, we have several examples uh, emanating from the Global South, as we have seen in these last few days, with the, with the Zapatistas re-entering many of the cities that they retook in 1994 in their insurrection. Uh, the efforts, especially in India, with this, uh, with this massive patriarchal event that we saw just a few days ago, with women taking to the streets via, uh, to defend their own livelihood, as well as that of their sisters. Um, the Palestinians, the historical example of, of the Algerian Revolution, the Indian communists of Telangana after formal independence, uh, attempting an insurrectional movement to uh, destroy the feudal aristocracy. Of course, this, this issue is not just one of revolution in southern societies, given that it is the north, the core societies, that is North America and Europe principally, that are historically and presently most responsible for this problem of catastrophic climate change and environmental crisis. Thus, in this sense, we need to have uh, systemic change here in these core societies, uh, given that it is here where global capitalism, this system of thanatos, or death, uh, is upheld and maintained most strongly. In this sense, I think we can look at uh, international solidarity, the famous anarchist emphasis on transnational uh, no-borders organizing, um, in resistance to the international of death, as the Zapatistas famously put it. Um, in the book, in my last chapter, I do suggest that a new international is called for, one that uh, synthesizes much of the historical experience of previous internationals, the first, the second, the third, the fourth. One that be anarchist, one that uh, engages in mutual aid on a global level, among our species, especially among the most suppressed of, this, of our species, as well as other species the millions of other species who are similarly imperiled by this uh, destructive capitalist system. Positively, I think we can think of uh, the anarchist emphasis on federations, on bioregional uh, scaling, decentralization, uh, non-capitalist lifestyles, right, of course, and the rejection of consumerism and all of this, calling on, of course, pre-industrial human history as well as uh, many so-called traditional societies in the different cultures and the anti-capitalist cultures that they so principally have uh, shown to the world, the indigenous peoples of the world thinking in particular in this way. Uh, Post-scarcity anarchism was an idea proposed by Murray Bookchin thinking about sort of following Marx, thinking that uh, the capitalist material base could be consciously reappropriated uh, with technology being used to emancipate humanity. This is very much in consonance with Herbert Marcuse, several other critical theorists. But this, I think, this project remains very valid today, especially given the extreme contradictions in ecological terms that we are facing, and not us here in the north, of course, but the emphasis, of course, being on southern societies, given flooding events and all of these things. Um, so I think that this is really the task of all peoples. This is not the task of cadres, as I said, with Lenin or Mao or Trotsky or uh, the Jacobin. Uh, in this sense, you know, George Katsiafikas, with his wonderful uh, volumes examining the Guangzhou uprising in Korea, his new volume examining uh, popular uprisings throughout uh, East Asia and South Asia, I think that these are very uh, inspiring models, of course, that we should be looking at uh, and reflecting on. The idea that we are, that I am proposing is popular control, democratic control, the occupation or uh, decolonization, better put, of the global power system uh, with a devolution of power to the demos, the people of the world. Popular control, the council system, the, revolu the lost treasure of revolutionary tradition, as Hannah Arendt famously puts it in her conclusion to On Revolution. We can see that uh, democratic counter-societies, anarchist um, movements, perhaps, if intensified, and thinking of the traditions of the CNT and the FI, and so many other wonderful anarchist examples, perhaps can intervene in this way, um, redistributing and reappropriating, uh, restructuring the production system uh, by retailing it to socially necessary goods, created with the minimum uh, ecological impact possible. You know, this very much follows from the, from the wild dreams of the environmentalists of the 1960s, the precautionary principle, 
um, solar communism of David Schwartz, which I call on very centrally in this final chapter to my book, the idea of using uh, renewable energy to liberate humanity in this way. So going forward, I think that we, we have several tools to call on uh, in our struggle against the death drive, uh, which is so principally symbolized by capitalism in the state. The general strike is a wonderful uh, tool, I think, that we need to be pushing forward uh, and, and presenting. The, the general idea of counter power, uh, dual power, the anarchist counter society within the shell of the old, but at once confronting it rather than merely uh, dividing from it. The, the theory here is that the oppressed or the subordinated, the subjugated, are uh, also subjects, that they are not just objects, we are not just objects, we are not just people to be administrated, but people who are autonomous and can think for ourselves to recreate society in ways like this, in flourishing uh, and artistic, creative ways. What we are faced, the alternative, of course, that we are faced with is that which was correctly analyzed by Rosa Luxemburg uh, amidst the depths of the First World War approximately 100 years ago. That is, that capitalism, the rule of capital, will inevitably become barbaric, will inevitably give in to barbarism if the socialist revolution, if the anti capitalist revolution is not successful in displacing it. The ecological crisis clearly uh, is a representation of this for us today. And uh, it is for this necessity, of course, that we must organize and debate, as we are doing here at this conference, uh, with a new world in our hearts, as Buenaventura Duruti put it so nicely. Um, and to close, I would merely like to cite the closing lines of Vijay Prashad's latest book, uh, Arab Spring, Libyan Winter, when he says, Down with the present, long live the future, may it be so.